Welcome back. So this is the Bamboo Lab X1 and it's the fastest 3D printer that I've ever used. It's also my first Core XY machine. So unlike the Prusa Mini where the print head moves in X and Z while the bed moves in Y, the X1's print head moves in X and Y while the print bed just moves down for Z. And there's a couple of different benefits to having this type of motion system. First, you can print taller, thinner stuff a lot easier since the bed isn't swinging your part back and forth. Also, and a little bit more specific to me, this is the entire footprint of the printer. Like, I don't have to worry about how far the bed is gonna move behind or in front of like the the chassis so it's really convenient to just push it up against the wall now this is the base model x1 and not the x1 carbon but i have done a few upgrades since i've gotten it so i've installed a hardened steel nozzle for more abrasive filaments like carbon fiber pla i ended up getting the chamber camera so i can check up on my prints remotely and i have the ams to print up to four materials at once now this video is going to be mainly focused on the printer itself but I do plan on making a separate video about my experiences with the AMS, so be sure to subscribe down below for that. Starting with the build quality, the X1 feels solid, which is exactly what you want for the speeds that this thing prints at. Under the plastic covers, there's a steel chassis for rigidity and carbon rails for the print head to help keep the weight down. The X1 is also fully enclosed, but you have access to the print volume through the removable top and the front door, um, which is really nice to just have two points of access for maintenance. Also, if you have the printer on the floor like I do, it's really nice to look down through the top glass to check on the print. There's also a removable build plate to help you know, get your parts off easier or swap to another material like textured or high temperature PEI. I do wish though that there was some more kind of registration for the build plate so I can easily just slide it in without having to perfectly line it up every time I put it back. But getting to the actual prints, I've used the X1 for prototyping, Etsy orders, and just like random decor and organizational stuff around my apartment and everything's come out great. Also, all the STLs will be linked down below the like button in case you wanna print them out for yourself. So the X1 has four printing speeds, silent, standard, sport, and ludicrous. Most of my prints were done at standard since it's already really fast, but I do occasionally push it to sport if I'm feeling a little bit more impatient. There really isn't much of a quality difference between these two. They look similar enough to the point where for me, it's just for the time benefit. And I don't really use silent mode. Like, I don't find it that much quieter than just the standard print speed that I can justify waiting longer for my parts. There have been a few times though that I put it in silent just so the first layer can go nice and slow and I can really get the small parts to stick. And I still haven't been able to actually finish a part in ludicrous mode. Like every attempt I've made has ended with a layer shift like two or three minutes in. I started with the printer on my dining table, but I feel like that contributed to my first few failures since it was going at such a high speed and it wasn't a super sturdy surface that it was probably causing some more like vibrations. But even with the X1 on a solid surface like the floor, I still get consistent layer shifts in ludicrous mode. I'm not entirely sure what else I can try to fix this. I've tried the self-test and the calibration a few different times, but if you have any suggestions, please do leave them down in the comments. I'll see if I can try it out. But along with a lot of speed, you also have a decent sized print volume. At 256 by 256 by 256 millimeters, you can print pretty much anything short of a full helmet in one piece. And when it's not on ludicrous mode, at least, the parts come out consistently without any issues. I feel like the X1 has been the most plug and play experience I've ever had with a 3D printer. There's just so many sensors and other tech packed into this thing to make sure that Printing is super reliable and seamless from uploading an STL to having the final part in your hand. Things like the micro LiDAR to make sure you get the perfect first layer, auto bed leveling, using the LiDAR and force sensors for redundancy, and AI processing to check for the perfect first layer and stop the print if there's a spaghetti failure. Now that spaghetti detection does require the chamber camera, so if you haven't put that into your standard X1, it'll be skipping over that check. Now the hardware feels pretty polished and complete, um, but I do feel like the software could use a bit of work, but there have been like constant updates to fix bugs and even add new features. Like when I first got this printer, I couldn't install the network plugin on my laptop, but since then there have been a few updates that fix that issue and even add the ability to drag step files straight into the slicer. Also, there's some room for improvement on the phone app. Like I'd love the ability to print files that are on the SD card in the printer from the app rather than having to go to the printer itself. I just feel like this would be convenient for like Etsy orders where I'm printing the same G code repeatedly whenever I get an order. There is the option though of reprinting old prints that you've sent to the machine before using the app. Um, 
But for me, I have this really bad habit where I don't save any of the files that I put in the slicer. So when I go to the history, it's just a bunch of prints called untitled. Also, I mentioned earlier that I installed the chamber camera. So when I checked the live feed from either the app or the slicer, it looked just fine. But when I actually downloaded a time-lapse, there was this weird green bar on the right side of the frame. Now, I don't have any of these files anymore. I accidentally formatted the SD card on my printer, but there have been a few updates to all the software, the slicer, the app, and some firmware upgrades to the printer since then, which have fixed the issue. And it's great to see these like continual improvements of the software and fixing issues and even adding new features. Like I'm excited to see where they take this software and what it looks like a year from now. I think the craziest part though, is that the X1 is Bamboo Labs first printer. I think the P1P is out for pre-order right now, but it hasn't shipped yet. The X1's fast, reliable, and it's pretty much as plug and play as you can get. Like if this is their first printer, I can't wait to see what they come up with in the future. And also how the features that are in this printer, like the AI and all that stuff, how it trickles down and how it affects the feature sets of other printers from other manufacturers. But thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe down below for more videos about tech, cameras, and making. Here's a video about 3D scanning with your iPhone. And here's a video that YouTube thinks you're gonna like the best.